Welcome to Bob Folk Rides Hunting Adventure. Boy, does this show bring back the memories. My first bighorn sheep with Corey Kristoff up in Alberta. Oh, I tell you what, I've got a lot of sheep since then. And I've been skunked a few times since then. One was Corey. And guess what? I'm going up one more time because I think the gods are going to shine down on me because we went up and hunted some wolves. So I think we saved some sheep. And maybe that will allow me to take another sheep this year. But until then, watch this show. Bighorn sheep coming right up. Victor Chevrolet, Bass Pro Shops, and Alamositos Ranch present Bob Folkrod's Hunting Adventures. Seven continents, 80 species, a five-year quest in the making. High adventure. Dangerous game. Real-world training tips. This is Bob Volkrod's Hunting Adventures. Sheep on Come with me. The Rocky Mountain Splendor of Alberta is one of the treasured wilderness landscapes of North America. The high country here is home to the largest wild sheep on the continent, the quick-footed bighorn. Redhead pro Bob Folkrod has come to the mountains in the west central part of the province to hunt with Chungo Creek Outfitters. In this spectacular country, getting there is definitely a big part of the fun. Bob is welcome to camp by longtime outfitter Greg Kristoff. Good day. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Good to see you here. Oh, nice being here. I'll tell you what, what a beautiful ride that was, huh? Welcome to our camp. Thanks. I appreciate it. What a gorgeous ride, huh? Uh, beautiful country. <laughs> yeah, you got some rugged mountains, too. Well, you're going to be seeing those mountains real close up for the next couple of weeks. Well, you're in for a treat. Uh, why don't you come on in and we'll get you into our cook tent here and get you to a coffee and we'll get you settled in. That coffee sounds good. After eating lunch, guide Cory Kristoff prepared the horses for the upcoming hunt. By daylight the next morning, the guys were hours from camp. The horses helped with the first part of the trip in the high, thin air. But before long, the hunters are on foot, getting a close look at the country the bighorns call their own. But trust me, on, on this bighorn sheep hunt, you want to be as in good a shape as you can be. There's some serious, serious hills here, and you got to go up them every day. Keep yourself in a good attitude. So. The rams are a lot easier to see when they're up about moving around and feeding because you can spot that movement. Once they're bedded down in that shale, you can spend all day sitting there looking and a lot of times you just never see them. Bed in the little cliffs and that kind of stuff. As with most mountain hunting, a lot depends on a good set of binoculars and lots of climbing. This is tough and sometimes dangerous going, but sheep hunters wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. 
This ram is approaching maturity, but it's early in the hunt. Bob decides to take his chances and wait for something a bit better, a decision that he'll question in the days ahead. Bob Folkrot's Hunting Adventures is brought to you by these five sponsors. Vortex, Best of the West Rifles, Huskama Long Range Optics, Kinetrek, Kufaru, and LJ Blessings Ranch. The new Victor Chevrolet building is now open. Visit us at 7200 Pittsburgh Victor Road, Route 96 near Eastview Mall or victorchevrolet.com. Although Bob completed his obsession quest taking over 80 animals with a rifle, his first love has always been bow hunting. He's teamed up with longtime friend and archery coach Mike Price to help make you a better bow shot. This week's archery lesson is brought to you by Heritage Archery Academy and these great archery sponsors. Easton, Hoyt, Limb Saver, Gateway Feathers, and Tactical Hearing. Here's a little quick <clears throat> tip that may help you to give you that little advantage for the second shot. Question, which arrow should come out of the quiver first? You know, as we taught in the bow school, first one in the evening should be the furthest one away from you. And if you look in, in my quiver, how I got my arrows positioned, right? First arrow out of the quiver, here it comes, okay? Bring it up, put it up on top. Don't even have to look at it. Slide it down, guess where the knock is? Right there. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Boom, there goes the shot, that arrow goes off. Which one is gonna be your second arrow, closest one to you, okay? Everything, boop, come up. Slide it back down, knock is all ready to go in, slide it right in. So when you, you basically look at it like this, that's the way the knock is gonna fit on the string. You basically take it out, completely bring it around, put it in the quiver. <clears throat> See how cock feather, knock, all in the same position. Again, here it is. Knock is all ready to go on, bring it out, bring it straight around, put it in the quiver. <clears throat> all, your, all your cock feathers or your knock is basically going to be all in the same position. Ooh. Now that's the way you practice, okay, shot to shot. But everybody does the same thing. Oh, goodness sakes, I hit him, da, da, da. Okay, let me go back to this again, okay. I'm going to make another shot. Okay, first arrow out of the bow, right here, just like this. Comes back up, comes on. Okay, and this is the way you can practice too, okay? I'm going to make another shot. But then I'm going to go for the second shot, just in case. Don't make no difference whether you, maybe you spined him, he went down, you need to get a second shot. I mean, I've got, I've got a video of me shooting a deer, and I actually thought I missed him, you know? Shot. Deer jumps, runs over, stands, boom, I got another shot into him just because of the way I practice at home. Same way I practice with a rifle. Stand there, bang, gun goes off, I bolt it, get ready for the second shot. If he's moving, still standing, boom, I hit him again. And you need to practice that at home with a bow too. So here we go, here comes your shot. Boom, grab it, grab it, watch him, watch him, where's he going? Stand there, slide it up real quick. Oh. It was a whole lot faster when I shot fingers, I can tell you that. <laughs> Practice that second shot. No matter where he goes. You may hit an animal. We did this in the school too. Hit an animal. Boom. Oh, made a bad shot. Thing runs out there 80, 90 yards. Is it ethical to shoot at him again? Absolutely. Absolutely, he's already wounded. You got nothing to lose by hitting him one more time or at least attempting to. Make sure you try to get that first shot. That's a good ethical shot, but if something goes wrong and you know you hit him wrong and he goes out there, even if he's past what you've ever practiced before, fling another arrow at him. Try to get another hole into him. Two holes are better than one. Four holes are better than two. Leaves more blood on the trail. You might just find him if you put a blood trail down.
All right. Happy hunting. Bob's sheep hunt began long before he arrived in camp. That's the bibs right there, I believe. Yeah. Got everything I need right there. Bass yeah. Pro Shop's outdoor world in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania should have just what he needs. Got the bibs, now I need to find the jacket. With the unpredictable mountain weather, Bob knew he would need an outerwear system that could handle lots yeah. of different temperatures. Yeah, it's got redhead, got moss yoke, fence Where's it? Extreme elements, where's that? Oh yeah, that's what I want right there. Zips out for the sleeves. I, I read about this in the catalog. This has got everything that I need right here. I have no idea what's gonna happen on this hunt, whether it's gonna be hot, cold, rain, snow, but this has got a jacket inside. I can even sit, zip out the sleeves. It's got a hood on to it. It's got neoprene cuffs into it. I mean, if it's extremely cold, it's gonna keep me warm. If it's hot, I can take the one jacket out, but that's got everything I need. The only thing I gotta do, I've gotta test it for myself. That'll tell me whether it works or not. How's the hunting? Not bad at all, got myself a double buck here. Did you really? <laughs> all right, good deal. Now that's what I call a torture test. Hey Bob, did you think to bring a fishing rod? Looks like the redhead extreme elements can handle just about anything, including day five of Bob Sheep Hunt. Transportation for all of Bob Folkrod's hunting adventures is provided by Victor Chevrolet. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. Bob Folkrod is bighorn hunting in the high country of Alberta with guide Corey Kristoff. It's the fifth day of the hunt. The team heads up the mountain, but the weather won't give them a break. The weather sometimes dictates what the hunters can do, and snow can make spotting tough, climbing impossible. The next day is snowed out. Time for some much needed rest in camp and some hot grub. The horses don't seem to mind a day off either. Next day, the weather improves, and the hunters are up the mountain early. And I'll tell you what, we're on top of this mountain, and it is some scenic. It's absolutely beautiful. It isn't something I know if I, if I really want to hunt in or not, but we're up here. We're going to glass for them bighorn sheep, see if we can't find one. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Fog, mountains. Thanks for some tough spotting after a snowstorm like this. You get all the different colors, black and white out there. When it's when the mountains just all gray, the, the white back end on those sheep really stand out. But uh, the snow on the mountains and that bright sun makes glass a little difficult sometimes. no rams to be spotted. But the beauty on top of the world is a big part of sheep hunting. Sheep hunting for many is a once in a lifetime trip. More often than not, due to the cost. But if you're an outfitter, it's the price of doing business at the ends of the earth. Uh, it's one of the things that people need to understand is that to run an operation such as we have here, it takes an awful lot of, of uh, cash flow uh, the first of all, the initial purchase price is, is extremely high. You've got uh, 35 or 40 head of horses that you have to take care of. 
And you have to feed those guys year round. You have to have an awful lot of tack and saddles and pack saddles and equipment, uh, trucks and trailers to move them. And the kind of country that we're operating in here uh, really is very hard on, on trucks and equipment. And then we have uh, probably 15 or, or more outfitters tents that, that need to have upkeep and maintenance done on them and the purchase price on them is uh, quite high as well. Today's gearbox includes Redhead Extreme Elements Park and Pants, Browning A-Bolt 300 Wind Mag, Winchester Nosler Ballistic Tip Ammo, Sims True Glow Limb Saver Recoil Pad, and XPS Power Dry Thermals. On the eighth day of the hunt, the team is concerned. With the weather making things tough, they desperately need to spot a good ram. The ram is so far off that even the telephoto lens of the camera has a hard time picking them out. But a spotting scope helps. Five hundred yards is just too far. Bob and Corey must close the distance. But this isn't Kansas. Closing the distance in this country won't be easy. Looks like Bob may need repelling lessons before this hunt is over. As Corey and Bob approach, the big ram's not where they last saw him. Corey moves up. He shouldn't be far. There he is. He's coming over this edge. There he is. He went up while the guys went down. Let's hope Bob spots him. He's got company. Okay, here we go. Yep. Bob will have to hurry and shoot. Looks like oh, a solid side. hit, Bob. He's on side. Yeah, I seen him go down, Bob. He come right through that chute there in the cliff, and, and uh, he fell right over that ledge right there. He must have come right, you circled right around, and then come back around, huh? Yeah, it's right down there, and he fell. I saw him fall right off the edge of that cliff, and he'll be just right down in this chute. <laughs> Let's look at him. Congratu congratulations, Bob. Let's go take a look at him. In this country, recovering an animal can be tougher than the stalk. It takes lots more climbing, three hours worth. But eventually, the hunters make their way to the long sought trophy. <laughs> I think it took longer to stalk to him after he was down than it did to get to him up there. <laughs> I think so. We you know we just got off the horses and poked our nose over the edge and, and uh, there he was. And, he kind of tried pulling a sneaky on us there with the stock, but we caught him halfway through, and here we are. Yeah, yeah. Several hours later. A long day. Nine and a half years old, and a fine Rocky Mountain ram. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Bob. It's been a great hunt. It's been a hard hunt, but it's been a great hunt. To learn more about sheep hunting in Alberta, stay tuned to the end of the show. This segment has been brought to you by the Victor Chevrolet Deal of the Week. Check them out at VectorChevrolet.com.
Chevrolet.com. Buy new roads. Victor Chevrolet. Same place I get my trucks from, and you should too. This week's training tip is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition. All right, the gun's on, we know that, on a bench. But let's go outside in this snowy condition today and see whether we can do the same thing over again. And we got a snowstorm going on today. We're gonna go outside, we're gonna practice in that, and mostly, we're gonna practice in getting that second shot off. I like to practice in the wrong conditions, so I'm ready on the hunt. The past few years, I've been practicing for tough conditions. Bad weather, wind, sun in my eyes, moving targets, out of breath. These are the conditions we can be faced with on our hunt. And there's one skill you may not have practice for at all. A miss, a poorly placed shot, or even a good shot on big game often requires a quick and accurate follow-up shot. All right. So how do you practice this at home? Well, I have a snap cap in there right now. I'm gonna go through the motions without actually shooting. So you're gonna talk to yourself. Okay, so here we go. You're gonna get in on, in on the gun. You're gonna sit there and say, make this sh first shot count. Squeeze, 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 bang. Goes over, eye comes up, looks over the scope, making sure no more animals run into it. Shell comes out of the gun, and as I'm looking into the scope again, I'm pushing the bolt down. Squeeze, 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 snap. When that thing goes snap, where was the crosshairs? Was it in that six or 12 inch circle, which is the lung area that you're trying to hit? That's the key. Was you in your lung area? <laughs> All right. Hey, if you practice in under these kind of conditions at home, you'll be glad you did. Someday it'll pay off. And most of all, practice that second shot. Good luck. <sighs> Let's get some coffee. Up here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, hunting Timberwolves. I've hunted up here for uh, bighorn sheep. Uh, got a real fantastic moose. In fact, Corey won the uh, belt buckle of the year for the biggest moose shot in, in Alberta. Corey and his family put some put some baits out here for these timberwolves. See if they could get these predators in under control and help bring the elk and the moose, things like that, back again. And at the same time, give the sportsman a realistic good chance of taking a timber wolf. So the boys up here do a real good job. And I'd suggest that uh, no matter what species of game you're after, these fellows are gonna put their time in and give you an honest effort. And with any luck and some hard earned hours, you, you might be lucky. Uh, it's not a cakewalk hunting these timber wolves. You know, it, this is my third day in here, 12 hours a day. I don't know whether I got him on video or not. I was reading the sheep magazine. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't believe I've ever read a magazine in a blind dip. 12 hours in, inside this blind's a long day. Crows have been just tearing it up. They've put uh, they put a lot of bait out, and it was uh, two o'clock. I looked up, and I thought they'd come out of the the bush to the right because that's where some tracks were. And they, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many of them were. And they looked up here. I don't know whether they seen the, the black hole or, but they were running kind of to the bait. And just as fast as they were running, they were taking back off again. I swung the camera 
clear around and put it on a wide angle. I ain't real proud of the footage if I have it at all. But we got ourselves a timber wolf. It uh, started out about 14 below this morning and the heat hit this old uh, blind and she warmed up. I was stripped off here pretty good. Proud of the shot. He was hitting the timber. He was actually in the timber. And I squeezed one off and jacked another one. I tried to get a shot at the second one. They just was in the timber. I couldn't even get a crosshair on one of them. But I pulled off a good shot on that one. They're a tough animal, but they ain't too tough for that short mag. We looked at the footage, we don't have him. All we got is you can just see one, the last one, and uh, just at the edge of the frame on wide angle. And they, were, they were, goodness sake, 75, 100 yards further down in the woods from where that was. Maybe they were just being cautious. Maybe they were just, uh, they were gonna circle. And maybe I got impatient and I should have been a little more patient. And maybe waited, but uh, we may get another opportunity yet this year to get one on video. But for right now, if that's the only animal I don't get on video out of 75 species, I'm still patting myself on the back. packing this thing under there about warm me out Bob. That's it. So anyways here we are we're in Alberta uh, in the foothills and uh, this is Chungle Creek Outfitters. We do wolf hunts in the winter along with bighorn sheep, moose, mule deer, elk and white-tailed deer hunts in the fall. This is Bob's third time back with us. Bighorn sheep for the first, bull moose number two and uh, now he's got himself a nice wolf here on his third hunt. Coming back here for uh, another, uh, gonna try my second slam. Coming back up here, wouldn't go any other place but up here for my big horn. And uh, who knows, maybe at that time of year we might even sneak in one of them big elk that these guys are killing up here too. You want a good hunt, I don't care what it is. Like I said earlier, guys put out 100% effort. If you do your job, I'm sure you'll get the opportunity to a nice animal no matter what you're after. For help with all of your hunt booking needs, contact J&M Safaris at jnmsafaris.com. After your successful hunt of a lifetime, contact Wes Good at kanadistudio.com for the finest taxidermy in the business. Be sure to follow Bob and all his adventures at bobfolkrod.com slash tv and facebook.com slash bfolkrod. And don't forget to hit the like button.